Hello and welcome to another video from TechBeats. Today what we're going to be discussing or going through is how to renew an SSL certificate for free using cPanel and Zero SSL. Now at the moment with Namecheap what you get is shared hosting plans and basically you get an SSL certificate free but for the first year only and then after that time you'll be prompted to purchase another one at renewal and it will cost you just under £10. Um, so not too expensive, um, but if you want to do it for free, then this video will show you how. Just before we go into that, I just want to talk a little bit about SSL certificates. So some of the people watching these videos might not un fully understand what they're for or how they can benefit you. So if you don't renew them, you basically risk losing your website's SEO ranking on the search engines. Um, you could increase data protection issues and also just lose visitors and definitely browser trust. When the certificate expires or you don't already have one, then I'll just show you what that looks like. So when you have a certificate, which is the S part of the HTTPS protocol you see here, you can see this website, which I've got, has got it crossed out. So if the certificate's expired or you haven't got one, this is how it will look like. Now, this is in Google Chrome. So you can see not secure flag here. It will say that your site isn't secure, certificate isn't valid, and then it will say the connection isn't private. So it will prompt you to not go further onto that site. So you can imagine if you're a customer, you're not going to go on here. If you wanted to, you can just go on advanced and then click proceed to drone tech media. And then you'll see the site load as normal. Obviously, you don't want your customers to go through that experience because you'll probably lose customers before they go any further, especially if you're an e-commerce site. That's not going to be a good look. The principle of an SSL certificate is that the secure version of HTTP, the front part that you see on a website, is known as the protocol. Once you've got a valid certificate, then that becomes HTTPS s being secure so ssl itself stands for secure sockets layer and then that is basically an upgrade on the basic protocol now the ssl encrypts data in transit so when it leaves your device and travels over the internet it's decrypted on the other side which could be say a server which hosts the website so the type of attack for example that it would prevent or significantly at least reduce or make harder would be like a man in the middle attack, which means to listen in or the ability to read the data transiting between you, your device and the one that you're trying to connect to and communicate with. So that's why if you want to take payments on your website, then to be PCI compliant, you need to encrypt or jumble up that data. Otherwise, you're potentially making it easier for an attacker or a hacker to steal the customer's bank details, which ultimately you could be responsible for. So this is really important to, you know, keep up to date and uh, get one issued as soon as possible. So what we'll do, we'll go on to explaining how to get the SSL certificate and install it. So without further ado, let's jump in. Now, the broad steps that you'd need to kind of cover off essentially to complete this is step one is that you need to pick the type of SSL certificate that is suitable. In most cases, what's called a domain validated SSL is sufficient. I'm going to assume that's enough for the person viewing this video. So that's the basis that we're going to continue with, which is fine for most, most people. Second bit is that we need to generate the certificate signing request. That's called a CSL, abbreviated to. Um, and that's the process of generating the certificate, which you'll see later in the video. You then need to submit the CSR. Uh, to the certificate issuer, whoever you choose. So we're going to be choosing zero SSL for the purpose of this video. Um, there are a few other options. I'll link a website article to this and you can have a look at a few other options if you want to. And then there's a couple of options in order to deploy uh, or go through this process. And you can either do it by shell, which a company like Let's Encrypt lets you do, or you can do the non-shell, or in other words, the GUI version, which is looking at the graphical user interface. And that's the one we're going to do because I want to make it as easy as, as possible for anyone watching this video to be able to follow along. Now, some prerequisites. This guide is based on 
Namecheap being the hosting provider, but as long as you've got access to the cPanel, then you should still be able to follow along. You also need to select your chosen uh, free SSL provider if you don't want to go with zero SSL for any reason. But I have used them and you know they're pretty straightforward and do what they say pretty, pretty easily. So um, I'm certainly going to be using them for this video. A couple of other things is that they're very user friendly. It's deemed secure. So the certificates have SHA-384 signature algorithms by default and they provide DV certificates, which is what we want to do for the purpose of this video. And the free SSL certificate that they provide you, it lasts for 90 days. If that's not enough or you don't want to keep doing them, then you can pay a small fee for um, which lasts a year. But as I said from the beginning of the video, the whole reason of this video is to avoid um, that charge for whatever reason you want to. Um, and then what we're going to do is just remind you that if you want to do it for free, then in 90 days you should get a reminder coming through once you register with the chosen SSL provider. But if not, then you know just make an, uh, your own calendar uh, reminder and just bookmark this video and the article which I'll link below and then you can just come back to it and follow along and after a few attempts you, you'll get really you know used to it and be able to do it without the video or the article. So now going into the detailed steps what we need to first make sure is that you've got access to the cPanel of your website so I'll show you what that means so I'm in Namecheap, but you could be with another hosting provider. You basically go to the hosting list and then you'll see a website. If you've got more than one website and you've hosted them on one server or one hosting plan, you might only see one website, but that's the, the, the top level or the root of your hosting uh, service. So you'd go through cPanel through this to access the other website. That's where you'd need to go cPanel. As long as you've got access to that, that's step one out of the way. Now the certificate provider that I've chosen is 0SSL. This is how it would look like. Go onto the website 0SSL.com and you'll be able to follow along with this video. Now for the purpose of this video, this is the domain that we're going to look to get a certificate generated on. And we'll get rid of this nasty message which makes it look really unattractive. So you copy the domain of your website and then just go over to the dashboard or in my case as I'm logged in I can just go to new certificate. Now wildcard certificate uh, you'd need a pro, um, pro subscription for um, so what we're going to do is skip that and we'll go straight to enter domains. Okay so you just need to put dub 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 at the beginning which I forgot to do. And as you can see, then we get the green tick. So now we should be able to go to next step. And for the purpose of this video, we want the free version. So we click the 90 day certificate and then next step. We do want to generate the certificate signing request, which is the CSR. So we'll leave that on the default. Next step. These are the different plans that you can do. Again, we want to leave it free. We're happy with 90 days. So keep that selected. Next step. Right. That certificate has now been created and ready for domain verification. So we have to prove that we own the domain uh, that we want to upload this to. So for example, no one else but me should be able to do this on my website and same in your case. So it's a, a security measure. Now we've got three different ways that we can verify it's our website. So they can either send you an email, you could do DNS uh, C name, which is basically um, changing your name servers it's slightly a little bit more involved we're going to go for the third option which is to upload a file and here you can see there's five steps which lay out exactly what we need to do so the first thing that needs to be done is you need to download the authorization file so let's do that and it's only a text file so it'll take like a second to download now step two what we need to do is upload that file that you just downloaded to this path on the server so easiest thing to do is just copy that and we'll head back over to our hosting providers site and we'll go to the cPanel so that will just redirect you and you see the dashboard will look something like this so here what we're looking for is the file manager and here you can see the files of the website now just to make sure we can see all the files I'm going to just check settings 
and make sure that you've got show hidden files ticked. By default, it'll be like that. So we wanna just tick it and then click a save. Right, the next thing that you wanna do, if you don't see your website listed on the left panel here, then you'll just go to public HTML. That's essentially the root location of the server that your website's hosted on. So we we'll just click that. And as you can see, I've actually got a well-known folder already. Now, if you didn't have this, what you would do is if you're in here, pretend you haven't got this for whatever reason, you would just click new folder and paste the first bit of the address that we copied without any of the slashes like that. And then you'd click new folder. Once you've done that, you should see a folder like the one you've just created. Double click that. And then the next bit that you need to do that, in my case, is already done, is you create another folder. And that should have the second part of that path. So you'd have this section now. So altogether, once it's um, accessed, the full path will basically append together. And that's what you need to have. So you'd click create folder again, and then you'd be here. And in my case, I've got a certificate already, but I can still upload another one. So. Let's upload the one that we just got. We select file and we've just uploaded that text file. And then you can double check here, this file path, so public HTML, then well-known PKI validation, that matches this. That's how it should be looking. So now what we can do as we've uploaded it, now my file path is slightly different. So if this doesn't work, I'll go back and amend it. But let's just assume it's fine for now and we'll click next step and we'll go to verify domain so hopefully it can find that file let's give that a minute there we go so it's found it and it just says the domain's been verified so it means the system is issuing the certificate at the moment and the page will refresh in a few seconds now you can see the status is updated so it says your certificate has been issued and is ready for installation so you need to click continue so just before you do that is the certificate file. So it comes in a zip file. So you need to download that and we'll just keep that in downloads. That's fine. You can see it's downloaded here. We'll just go to next step. And what we need to do, we need to add this file. There's three files in there. We need to copy and paste those in the C panel. So go back to C panel, this section here. And we need to be looking for the SSL options. So we'll just go down to security. And it's this one here. So SSL slash TLS. Click that. And what we need to do is click manage SSL sites. Once you're here, you can see this is the website in question. And we've got a red warning exclamation mark, which once we've done this properly, that will go. So we click update certificate and it'll just take us down to here. So if the right domain isn't selected already, make sure that's uh, selected. And then you've got three sections here. So certificate, so abbreviated to CRT, your private key, and the certificate authority bundle or CA bundle. These are the three things we need to put in there. So let's go back to that file and we're gonna extract the file because it's a zip, there we go. So now you can see when it opens, you've got the CRT, certificate um, bundle and the private key. So all we need to do is open this with notepad Go to more apps, go notepad, click open. And then we need to copy the whole thing. So easiest thing is just press control and A and then control C. So we can just control V that in there. And as you can see, once you've pasted that in, the domain should come up properly. If not, then you'll have an error and you won't be able to proceed. The next part we'll do is the key. That's this one here. So you can double click it as well and just click notepad again. And same thing, control A, control C, and control V to paste that in. And last part, we've got the CA bundle. There we go, so control A, C, and we'll just paste that in. All that's left is click install certificate. And as you can see, we've got a success message here. Go, go to OK. And if we now look back at that site here, you can see the warning message is gone. So that now should be done. We'll just go back over to the website. And now you can see it, it's all updated now. 
now we haven't got any errors here we've also got the padlock so if we click that you can see it now says connection is secure if we click the website here we can see we've got the s for the https as well and google hasn't flagged it as a dodgy website so that's everything that we needed to do hope you found it useful and i'll leave a link to the article below and zero ssl if you need to um, go back on any of the information thanks for watching